Hello viewers! Did you know that stuff like rough running, lack of power or even hard starting can be caused by something as simple as a bad EVAP purge valve? Its job is to occasionally vent the gas fumes from the fuel tank into the engine and if it breaks, it can really mess up its operation. So in this video, we'll see what exactly you can expect should this happen and more importantly, how to test the EVAP purge valve before replacing it. At this point, I'll assume you already know what the EVAP purge valve does and what the symptoms of a bad one are. If you don't, we'll go through all this a bit later. But now, let's see how to test it, should you conclude that is to blame for your car problems. The first step is to pop the hood and locate the EVAP purge valve. In most cases, it will be near the engine with a rubber hose connecting it to the intake manifold. The first thing you want to do here is visually inspect the valve. Maybe the connector is loose, preventing it from communicating with the ECU, or the hoses attached to it have come undone or are cracked. Next, if it all looks intact and in its place, I suggest using a multimeter to measure the purge valve's internal resistance. To do so, set the multimeter's knob to ohms readings and measure the resistance between the terminals. The usual values for most cars range between 15 and 30 ohms, but to be on the safe side, I'd suggest getting the exact values for your model. If the resistance is far out of range, the valve will have to be replaced because its internal electrical circuit is damaged. The following step would be to see if the purge valve actually opens when the ECU tells it to do so. One way to do this is with a diagnostic tool, but this will have to be a fancy, expensive one capable of performing so-called actuation tests. But the chances you don't have it, so instead, you can use a piece of wire to jump the valve. Connect one end of this wire to the battery's positive terminal and the other to the valve's positive pin. Once this is done, you should hear a click from the valve as the solenoid inside it engages. If there is no click, the EVAP purge valve is dead. Lastly, what I do is check if there is actual flow to the valve when it should be, because this can be obstructed by gunk buildup inside it. To do so, you'll need a vacuum pump, which you'll attach to the purge valve's inlet side. Once you've applied vacuum, the valve should hold it steady. If not, it's leaking and it will need to be replaced. Also, while at it, engage the purge valve either with a diagnostic tool or by jump wiring it. This opens it and you should see the vacuum drop immediately. If it doesn't, it means the valve is probably stuck and you'll have to replace it. So that's how you test the EVAP purge valve. And now, as I mentioned earlier, we'll go over some theory and common symptoms. As said, a bad purge valve might cause all sorts of engine running issues, increased emissions and, of course, trigger a check engine light on the dashboard. But let me elaborate on each of these a bit more closely. First of all, we have the check engine light, which comes on just about every time something's not right under the hood. In essence, the car's ECU monitors all vital running parameters, and if it notices some of them are off, it'll trigger this warning to let you know there is a problem. And the EVA purge valve is no exception here, as its operation is controlled by the ECU. So if you have a check engine light on the dashboard, it's time to plug in a scan tool and check the store trouble codes, which in case of a bad purge valve could be one of these. In many cases, the EVAP purge valve will get stuck in an open position, allowing gas fumes from the fuel tank all the time. And this, in effect, acts as an intake leak and offsets the air-fuel mixture, which can cause the car to run rough. 
This will probably be most noticeable at idle, because that's when the engine is most sensitive and doesn't tolerate any fuel delivery related issues. Similarly, a bad EVAP purge valve might cause hard starting, because the air fuel mixture won't be right when you turn the key. In most cases, it will fire up eventually, but it might take a bit more cranking and you might even have to press the throttle slightly. One symptomatic thing here, the problem might be most noticeable just after you filled up your car with gas, as this pushed a lot of gas fumes into the intake manifold through an EVAP purge valve, presuming it's stuck open. Also, if the air fuel mixture isn't right, which it won't be if the EVA purge valve is bad, you might also notice some sort of performance issues. This will usually be limited to hesitation on hard accelerations and, in some cases, a misfire when you put your foot down. Lastly, I'd mention the car's emissions, which are likely to go up if the EVA purge valve is bad. The thing is, if you have gas fumes uncontrollably entering the engine, this throws the combustion process out of balance, with more harmful gases from the exhaust as a result. Sure, you're not likely to notice this on your own, but if your car has to go through a smoke test on its yearly inspection, the gas analyzing machine used there will spot the excessive pollutants. The EVAP purge valve is a part of the car's evaporative emission control system, whose job is to prevent gas fumes inside the fuel tank from escaping into the atmosphere. And I'll show you how this works with this diagram. The main components of the EVAP system are the fuel tank itself, the charcoal canister, which is usually hidden somewhere under the car or within the fenders, and the EVAP purge valve. In addition, the charcoal canister has a vent valve, and there are also rubber hoses running throughout the length of the vehicle, connecting all these things together. As the gas inside the fuel tank slowly evaporates and builds up pressure, the fumes are forced into the canister, filled with charcoal, which makes them less volatile. Remember, gas fumes are very explosive. And from there, these now inert gases are sent into the intake manifold, where they get burnt off during combustion. But this flow has to be controlled, as otherwise, it would mess up the delicate air-fuel mixture, which is where the EVAP purge valve comes into play. It opens only when the ECU assesses that the timing is right, such as when coasting, and remains closed in other situations, like when starting the car or accelerating. If some of these tests reveal that the EVAP purge valve is in fact bad, the only thing left to do is to replace it. The good news here, they usually aren't expensive. For most cars, you can find them for less than 50 bucks. Even more, it's quite likely the valve is easily accessible inside the engine bay, meaning you can replace it on your own. Just undo the vacuum hoses and wiring connector, unclip the valve from its mount, and fit in a new one. So that would be all about the EVA purge valve what it does, how to test it, and how much will it cost to replace it. I hope this video was helpful, and if so, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. On the other hand, if you're having some different issues with your car, be sure to check other videos here or visit our site, mechanicbase.com, for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!